In today's video, is there such a thing as a fast metabolism? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rabella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about the idea of metabolic rate. What is a metabolism? Is there such a thing as a fast or slow metabolism? And the question came from my Instagram direct message on the screen here is my Instagram. So if you'd like to send me a question, you can DM it to me and I'll put it on the screen here. So we can talk about the, the question that I got today, which intrigued me quite a bit because as someone who's you know, been around this sport and been around people who for the better part of their lives have been trying to manipulate their body composition, we often get in these discussions of metabolisms. That's one of those trigger words that people hear. They use, I have a bad metabolism or this friend of mine has a great metabolism. The word just gets thrown around a lot. I don't think there's a lot of clarity. And for some people, like my friend here that asked the question, is there such a thing as a fast metabolism? Or are these people just kind of under-reporting what they actually eat and they're eating less calories than they say they are. So I want to discuss a little bit about that, but first let's explain exactly what your metabolism is. So your metabolism is basically all the chemical processes that are going in your body to break down your food to create energy, okay? Those processes are so dynamic. So before we get caught up in this fast, slow metabolism, Understanding just what goes into this metabolism thing is super important. You know, as you break down food in your body and it's going through your stomach and your digestive system, many things are playing a role in that, including hormones, including stress, including lean body mass, and the biggest by far is going to be genetics. Okay, so when we hear people that have fast metabolisms, yes, it's absolutely a real thing. And for those of us that have what I would say is a fast metabolism, well, it can seem like a blessing. But I can tell you when I was growing up, it did not seem like a blessing that I had a fast metabolism. Why? Because I wanted to gain weight. And for those that come from the one side of the coin where they want to gain weight and put on muscle, I had to work extremely hard to eat and I, I honestly was terrible about it, okay? You know, I was in college playing baseball on my feet running around all day and I didn't understand energy balance at that time. I didn't understand metabolism at that time. I just understood that no matter what I did, I couldn't gain weight. Well. What I didn't really ever do was track my damn calories. I never really understood that. I just ate as much as I could all day long. But looking back, I could have done a lot better job of actually tracking what I was eating because I probably could have done a better job throughout my day of eating more and eating more appropriate for my goals. And so people that have a slow metabolism, okay, what this means is that they don't have to eat a lot of calories to put on weight meaning that their bodies are just much more efficient at extracting calories from food. For someone like myself, I look at that and go, wow, that's interesting. They get to eat less and they can put on more lean body mass, okay? Now, I find that whatever the spectrum side of the spectrum you're on, you tend to kind of covet the other one, okay? Now that I'm a little bit older, I'm 43 years old, I've been lifting weights for 25 years, I appreciate the fact that I can eat pretty well and stay pretty lean. Now. I can eat less now at 43 than I could at 23. At 23, I would estimate my maintenance calories probably would have been, you know, 4,000 a day, maybe more, um, depending on my sports. Um, so when you think of someone with a fast metabolism, it's usually someone that you say, oh, they eat whatever they want and they never gain weight. Um, and that's certainly going to be a genetic predisposition to that. However, if you go through several periods of calorie restriction, what I've seen in my experience as a coach is that you can adapt your metabolic rate to that. Meaning, if you spend years and years and years overeating and eating lots of food, you're likely gonna have a higher metabolic rate than someone who spends years and years and years restricting, okay? Why? Well, because our metabolisms are adaptive. And that's one of the biggest things that I see as a coach is that we are really trying to put people in the best position possible. I've gotten very lucky and dealt with some clients that probably had very good metabolisms but never knew it, and we were able to add calories and get them leaner. I've also run into the same problem where I have people that are pretty lean, but when I start taking away their calories, they really don't start losing weight for a while. That's because their metabolic rates adapt. Their metabolisms are adaptive. We are adaptive to our environment. If you think of it in terms of 
kind of survival during periods of having less food, if our metabolisms didn't slow down and adapt, meaning our bodies got more efficient at extracting calories from the food and more efficient at not using that energy, well, we would be more likely to starve quicker. Well, we live in an era where we are very fortunate when it comes to food, calories are available by the handfuls. It's probably one of the real reasons that we have this obesity epidemic is just the availability of food and also the fact that we are much more sedentary as a culture. I diverse, that's a deep, deep discussion on why obesity is a thing, but if you, if you just look at the history of people, I don't think it can be argued that right now in human history is the most abundance of food and calories that we've ever had. I can literally hit a button on my phone and have food here in a short period of time. Um, I'm, you know, and I'm sure most of us are that way. And I don't think that was always the case. Food was not always available in such abundance. I mean, hell, refrigeration's only been around for what, a couple hundred years? Um, before that, they used to have to salt meats to keep them from spoiling. So you can understand where I'm going here. So if you're looking at someone who has a very good metabolism, they probably come from a background of people that were able to eat a lot. Um, you know, we can also get into somatypes. You know, there tends to be, I won't say it's with a certainty, but there tends to be a kind of correlation between, I would say, people who are ectomorphic, tall, lean, like myself. I'm six foot three, and I graduated high school at 155, 160 pounds. Um, I was playing basketball, volleyball, and baseball every single day. Maybe I had a predisposition to being, you know, having a faster metabolism. Maybe someone who's more sedentary and comes from that kind of a background has a predisposition for being having a slower metabolic rate. But I think wherever you come from, understanding that concept is important because no matter what, it still comes down to taking in calories and understanding where your kind of maintenance is that's going to determine if you are losing weight or gaining weight. Everyone talks about calories in, and calories out, how that's the magic thing. Well, the real problem with that is we don't actually have a calculation in our bodies for what our calories in and calories out are, okay? That's an estimation and most people are going online and trusting a calculator or they're doing some cardio and trusting the machine. That's not correct, those are not exact numbers. So when people say, oh, but I burned a thousand calories today and I only ate 500, why am I not losing weight? Well, you might not have burned a thousand calories. You might be more efficient than that, okay? So there's all these kind of things that go into what makes us up as metabolic beings. And one thing I really want to impart upon people is, and, this, and I've been guilty of this myself, is not getting caught up in what other people are doing. Oh, I have this friend that can eat 500 grams of carbs a day and 100 grams of fat and they don't gain weight. That's great for that person, but understand that you don't need to be metabolic shaming people. Just because someone has low calories and just because someone has high calories and they're maintaining doesn't make them a better person. No, okay? We should not be putting people in a position where they feel guilty about talking about their calories if they're lower than some people might think they should be or if they're higher than some people might think they should be. Okay, that's really the gist of it, is that we are all individuals, we all have our own metabolic set points, our own metabolic adaptations, our own history to dieting, and I as a coach, that's something I dig into with my clients. I, I find out what they're currently taking in, how many times they've dieted. Before we set up a plan for you or for anyone, there needs to be a discussion on the history. This is why I get really one of my biggest pet peeves is coaches who are kind of giving away cookie cutter plans without taking in information. Because you, my friend, you, that's right, you have a very unique set of things that make you up, that, that make up your caloric intake. And whatever your goals are, those need to be taken into consideration. So yes, there are fast metabolisms. I have some friends with extremely fast metabolisms. I'm not even gonna talk about you know, some of the clients that I've seen, but I've also seen the opposite end of the spectrum. People that you know, have to take in very low calories and do lots of cardio to get body fat to come off. Whatever the situation you're in, you're always gonna covet the other, okay? At least in my experience. Hopefully that helps you understand things a little bit. I really appreciate the great question. Thank you guys for keeping them coming and I'll talk to you tomorrow.